Hello students, this is Dr. Fazan Mirza. In this video, I'm covering electrophoresis, how gene probes are used and how electrophoresis can be applied in analysis of uh, particular alleles and um, the genes of, organ of individuals. So this question taken from October, November 2008, where the paper, paper five. So in this question, they were they, they have mentioned their international hep map project intends to develop chromosome maps and then describe the common patterns of human genetic variation. Research is in these, me, these, these different countries will collaborate to obtain genetic information and make findings available around the world, such as how the researchers can control variation between their individuals. So though many individuals must be there in each of these countries, so how that can be controlled by taking out a very large sample size of more than 1,000 in each of the country. Variation between the ethnic groups, how can that be controlled? So samples must be taken from as many countries as possible, including as many uh, races, ethnic groups as possible. So this will account for all the ethnic groups as well. Figure 3.1 shows the DNA fingerprints. Now, this is what I want to comment. Uh, from, from group of 10 people, A till J. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, these are all those 10 people whose um, uh, genes were being anal analyzed. The presence or absence of different areas of some genes have been located using specific probes uh, that fluoresce different colors. Key to gene probes, you can say the symbols are mentioned to you, membrane protein gene and muscle protein gene. So there are two genes which they have uh, analyzed here, membrane protein gene and the muscle protein gene. The membrane protein gene is having two alleles, I capital N, I small a. This is the dominant allele, and this is the recessive allele. Whereas the muscle protein gene is having four different alleles. There is one dominant allele, I capital M. There are three recessive alleles, I small m, A small m, B, and I small m, C. And you can see the symbol which are representing each, each of these. So what, what, what happens if person A is, uh, you can say, uh, gel is analyzed or electrophoresis gel is analyzed, you can see the membrane protein gene which is which this individual is having is having both the symbols. So this is this individual is I capital A, I small a, having both the alleles. So this is heterozygous. Similarly, B is also I capital A, I small a, C is I small a, I small a, because this individual is having only a single symbol of this particular membrane protein gene. Similarly, the last the uh, last three ones are I capital A, I capital A, I capital A each, because they all have only a single fragment present here. Now, if I ask you to analyze these two genes together, or sorry, these two alleles together for this gene, I capital A and I small a, which is of smaller size. I small a is of smaller size because it will travel longer distance. You can see the distance traveled if the fragment is a smaller. In electrophoresis, we know that smaller tra fragments travel the longer distances. So of I capital A and I small a, I small is the smaller fragment. Now, if you come to the muscle protein gene, Muscle protein gene, the same organism, the, the same individual A, if you look at the muscle protein gene, these are the symbols of this individual. So this means that the individual is I capital M, this allele is there as well, and this I small m A is present as well. So again, this is a heterozygous. And of, if you start to read off this, this table here, so what kind of information can we get about the muscle protein gene? We can see that I capital M muscle protein gene is the most frequent because this is actually present in so many different or, uh, individuals. You can just count out of 10 how many are having this one. I small ma is the least frequent because this symbol appears only here, here, and here. I small mb is the smallest and most negatively charged. Why is it smallest? Because it is traveling the longest distance. So this, will be, this must be the smallest one. So uh, coming back. Sorry, I mb is the, is, the, is the largest one, not the smallest one, because this symbol appears ahead. So this symbol appears at this point, it doesn't go ahead further. So these are the smallest ones. These fragments are the smallest ones. So IMA is the smallest one and IMB is the, the largest one. So all these information can be taken from this data. Outline how electrophoresis is used to obtain the genetic fingerprints. So recall how the wells are being made, how wells are made and the microliters of DNA samples are added and glycerin is added to make it sink and then dye is added and then uh, potential difference is applied and how the cathode is attached near the near the wells and anode at the opposite end because the DNA is negatively charged and you just let the potential difference being applied for, for 15 minutes, state the time and uh, analyze the gel on the uh, in the UV chamber. The shortest fragments will travel the longest distance. Just recall all the electrophysics detail. I'll share the link of, the, of my electrophysics lecture in the comments below. Um, furthermore, you, you will need to add buffer as well to maintain the pH and um, a state why some gene probes can be used to locate specific alleles of the gene. What are gene probes? Just recall the definition. These are single-stranded uh, segments having base sequences complemented to the specific parts of the gene. 
A state board conclusion can be drawn about, can be can be taken from about the alleles being located for two marks. Although all the information that I have just extracted with you from this data, this is what you can add here. I'll take another example here, how to read the electrophoresis gel. Now this question came in May June 2014, variant 51. And in this question, they have stated that in an investigation to study genetic variation, DNA was obtained from four varieties of same invertebrate species. So four varieties of the same invertebrate species. The following technique was used. DNA was digested. No RNA sequences were used. Multiple copies of they were hybridized and the fragments were separated using gel electrophoresis. Explain how RNA probes used to use in this technique, select the fragments of DNA. We know RNA probe is a single strand. It can bind to the specific sequence of complementary base pairing. By hybridization, just recall from the theory and you'll get two marks. This technique is able to separate small DNA fragments uh, that may differ only by one nucleotide. One nucleotide change is the point mutation and point mutation is the reason for genetic variation and gel, allows, gel separation here allows this point mutated genetic variation alleles to get separated because different RNA probe will attach to it. Describe the main series of gel electrophoresis for uh, say five marks. You can just give the same description as I've already discussed. Three group of students do gel electrophoresis separate the set of DNA fragments from each of the four varieties. State two variables that the student should standardize to ensure their results from the gel electrophoresis can be compared. So they must keep the volume of uh, volume of sample same. They must keep the volume of buffer same. The consistency of the gel must be kept same. The potential difference must be kept same. So this one you be standardized. Now state three different group of RNA probes A, B, and C were used. So A, B, and C are the different RNA probes. And one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four are the varieties of these uh, small invertebrates. Gel electrophoresis was then performed to see which uh, RNA probe can actually bind to the genes present there. Group of RNA probes are shown to you. Figure 1.1 shows that some DNA fragments are present in the genetic fingerprint of all the four varieties, one, two, three, four, when different group of RNA probe A, B, and C are used. Draw an arrow to indicate one DNA fragment found in all four varieties when RNA probe A is used, B is used, C is used. So when you're using A, which of these fragments actually tell you that they are common in all the four? So you look for a band which is common to all. If it's present in all, you can mark this as an answer. All the fragments must have traveled the same distance. So any point, if they are traveling to the same distance, the arrow can be can be drawn there, and this can be the answer because these actually tell you that all the four fragments in all the four varieties attached to the same RNA probe and they travel the longest, they travel the same distance. As already you have covered in your theory as well, that the shortest fragments travel the longest distance and the heaviest travel the least distance. With B, you have to mark this again. In B, again, you can mark this either, either mark this or mark this, or you can say, uh, you, can, you can mark this either, or you can mark this or go for this. So any of these can be marked. In C, again, any of the ones which are there in the straight line, you can mark them because they are the ones present in, in each of the four varieties. So all of these can be marked for the answer. State the varieties that appear to have the same genetic fingerprint, give the evidence for your answer. Variety variant and two have the same similar pattern. Why? Because every time one is giving a band, two is giving a band as well. So they have the fragments of similar, which is being asked. The genetic evidence actually tells you they have the same genetic fingerprint. So all the spots, wherever one is giving you the spot, two is giving the spot as well. So this is the reason that you will state from here. Do attend this question yourself, major 2040 and the one that I've discussed previously with you uh, to help you out with this uh, topic of electrophoresis and how the questions come in P5. That's it from my side. Thank you so much.